and welcome back to this channel dear students today's topic is gto that is get turn of thyristor isse pehle hum logo ne scr learn kiya hai we have studied that scr can be used as an ideal switch but this application is typically limited to few kilohertz rather 1 kilohertz frequency and to turn off the scr certain complex and expensive uh, circuitry are required to avoid all these drawbacks another device is used which is called gto ab exam point of view se hum log question kis type se expect kar sakte ho as far as gto is concerned the question may be like this explain turning on and turning off process of the gto or draw and explain switching characteristics of gto now this is the construction details of gto the construction is very much similar to that of scr we have learned that in case of scr again there are three terminals anode cathode and gate there are four layers p and pn on the same line gto is again con consisting of four layers p and pn there are three terminals as shown in this diagram anode a cathode k and this one g is the gate terminal as i said these two diagrams represent symbols of the gto now as far as the turn on time is concerned for gto as well as scr turn on time is same typically it is 1 millisecond but there is a major difference for turn off time period in case of scr turn off time period is typically 5 to 30 milliseconds whereas in case of gto it is 1 to 2 milliseconds so which is drastically reduced as far as gto is concerned now let us discuss turn on mechanism of gto it is similar to that of scr so we need to apply certain positive gate voltage this is the gate terminal as shown in this diagram we are applying positive gate voltage now this is p and p n that means there are four layers it can be treated as two transistor model so for this upper part we can say this is one transistor p and p if i want to mark the terminals i can say this is emitter terminal this is base terminal this is collector terminal of p and p transistor now another remaining i'm talking about this transistor that is p and p transistor then lower part lower three layers this npn which i am marking with red ink is another transistor npn whose terminals can be written as collector base and emitter so to turn on scr we need to apply positive gate voltage when you apply positive uh, gate voltage a positive gate current ig will cause increase in alpha 1 and alpha 2 of both the transistors the stage at which alpha 1 becomes equals to alpha 2 both transistors pnp and npn transistor will go into saturation and it will cause turning on of the gto as i said this is same as that of scr but turn off mechanism is pretty simple compared to the scr to turn off the scr what do we need to do we need to apply negative gate voltage over here so i will be changing the connection this will be negative gate voltage naturally the direction of gate current will be reversed and this one will be open circuited when you apply negative gate voltage as shown in this diagram this is minus terminal this is plus terminal due to this the excess carrier from base terminal of npn transistor and collector terminal of pnp transistor will be taken out and that will be applied to the external uh, circuit external uh, voltage so due to this both the transistors i mean npn and pnp will be cut off and the uh, gto will be turned off now let us discuss the switching characteristics of gto i have drawn two graphs first graph is the graph of ia and va on the same axis that is on y axis ia is anode current va is anode voltage so ia and va on y axis versus time on x axis <clears throat> second graph is the graph for gate current ig versus time now the turn on process of gto is similar to that of scr which we have already studied to turn on the gto like scr we have to apply a stiff gate pulse like this so this is the stiff gate pulse <clears throat> this is the graph of ig versus time period so in in this graph which i have shown a stiff gate pulse is applied to turn on the scr td is the delay time tr is the rise time which is same as that of scr <clears throat> now during this turn on process when the scr gets turned on then actually we need to remove this gate current 
but manufacturer manufacturers suggest that you should not remove the gate current even if the anode current has reached its latching value <clears throat> this is just to avoid the any unwanted phenomena of turning of the scr so even if ia has <clears throat> ia is the anode current even if ia has reached the uh, typical value certain amount of gate current is applied that is continuously applied to the gate terminal so this is called back porch current which is shown by this gap so this is the back porch current at point a actually the turn off process start because to turn off the gto we need to apply negative gate pulse so from this point negative gate pulse starts now refer this diagram as we discussed this is the gate pulse which is used to uh, turn on the gto when it is getting turned on this this is the graph i mean on the same graph i have shown two things one is anode current ia and another is uh, anode voltage va this red ink graph indicates the graph of anode current ia whereas this the graph which i have drawn with black ink is the graph for va that is anode voltage so during turn on process whenever this gate pulse is applied this graph va that is anode voltage starts increasing anode uh, starts decreasing anode current starts increasing now when you are applying a continuous small amount of gate current as we discussed earlier then this is called the back porch current when the back porch current is applied the value of anode current and anode voltage remains constant till the point a i have marked point a as i said at point a turn off process starts that means at point a we have to apply negative gate pulse so till point a values remain same now once at point a negative gate pulse is applied turning on off the process takes place so in this case the first part first time period i have written it as ts ts is called storage time whenever the negative gate pulse is applied the excess charges are removed so the time required to remove the excess charge is called storage time denoted by ts so this is the value ts which is the time period required to remove the excess charges whenever the negative gate pulse is applied negative gate current is applied to the gate terminal of gto during this ts value of ia that is anode current and value of anode voltage remains constant now once almost all the excess charges are removed then as you can see from this graph the anode current suddenly starts decreasing like this i'm talking about this portion so anode current starts decreasing so anode voltage starts increasing now this anode current has certain amount of slope till certain point this point here i have written it as tf tf is called fall time actually this is the ts time as we discussed in case of storage time excess amount of carriers are removed now at this point the ts gets completed whenever ts is completed anode current starts falling anode voltage starts increasing now at the end of this ts that means this this is the value at which this gate current is maximum so so at the end of ts we have marked the starting of tf tf is the fall time so tf is the fall time in, which indicates falling of the anode current with a certain amount of slope so this is the time which starts at the maximum value of gate current and it will be existing up to the certain time period say up to this point whenever there is a certain constant slope but after that there is a abrupt change in the slope of this graph due to this again you are getting certain abrupt change in the anode voltage so this particular time period is called tf after tf we have written tail current that means in order to switch off the gto the anode current must be zero and anode voltage must be uh, remain at the source voltage vs so if we are talking about anode current to turn off gto completely the anode current must reach to zero value so after tf after fall time there is sudden change uh, in the slope of this graph and 
certain amount of time period is required for the anode current to reach to zero value this is called tt which is called the tail time now typical value of fault time we already discussed this factor fault typical value of fault time is uh, one microsecond so during this fault time whatever the current is there i mean whatever amount of anode current is there that is called tail current so once this value reaches to zero then this amount of time period is denoted by tt which is called tail time so combination of all these time periods that is tf ts and tt represents the turn off time period so turn off time period is given by tq is equals to ts plus tf plus tt so this is about the switching characteristics of uh, the gto now the series and parallel operations of gto are exactly same as that of scr now we will discuss advantages disadvantages and applications of gto ye jo points hai ye aap log comparison ke liye bhi use kar sakte ho means if the question is like this compare gto and scr then you can well include these points related to advantages and disadvantages because we will be studying advantages and disadvantages of gto in comparison with scr so first let us talk about advantages first advantage is gtos are having higher efficiency second high voltage blocking capability compared to scr third faster switching speed fourth more di by dt rating especially during turn on process then gto is having lower size and lower weight fifth commutation circuits are not required for gtos commutation circuits are required for scr these are the circuits used to turn off scr and the drawback is that these circuits are bulky and expensive so commutation circuits are not required in case of gtos then disadvantages gtos are having higher latching and holding currents especially gtos are used for applications related to lower power this is because large negative current is necessary to turn off gtos then high gate circuit power losses are there and fourth low reverse voltage blocking capability these are few disadvantages of gto then applications typical applications of gtos are in case of high performance drive systems for example rolling mills robotics etc then it can be used in multi vibrators counters or pulse generators due to its lighter weights gtos can be used for traction purposes and last is in case of adjustable frequency inverter drives so this is about advantages disadvantages and applications of gto so dear students that's it for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video